Or it's like bigotry. Bigot. Bigot. Bigotry. Bigot. Bigotry. Bigot. Get used so often and so casually today that I think they've lost the quality of gravity that they deserve. It's like the boy who cried wolf. If you escalate the severity of every situation to emergency levels, then people will start to disregard the times when there's an actual emergency. If you call everything that you don't like bigotry, then people will start to act like nothing is bigotry, and then real instances that do need our attention will start to fall under the radar, and I think that that's already starting to happen. So can we have a sober and coherent conversation about this without it descending into tribal partisanship devoid of any critical reflection? I think a big part of the problem with this issue is that our popular definition of bigotry has broadened so dramatically that we've given people permission to make that accusation without justification. So I think we should take a look at that definition and frankly throw it away and come up with something that is more acute. I think the old popular definition of bigotry would have been something like holding or expressing hateful or contemptuous views against a demographic of people. Now that's not bad, but it seems to have evolved into something more like believing or saying critical things about a population of people, especially minorities. Now I get the instinct behind this. It's not nice to say critical things about other people, but that doesn't necessarily make it wrong. And bigotry, the real thing, is definitely wrong. No individual is immaculate or undeserving of criticism, much less an entire group of people. If no individual is perfect, then a community of imperfect individuals is bound to have areas that they can improve in. The old cliche that the best way to deal with a problem is by first admitting that you have a problem is true, and this is sometimes best understood through the feedback of others. Being able to hear and synthesize criticisms from people who are not you is a really healthy thing to do, but if we insist that any criticism of a group of people is bigotry, then we're just gonna suppress forms of dialogue that are authentic and healthy and could be used to help people. I think that most people have some sort of appreciation for the principle that I'm grasping at here, which is why those same people will roll their eyes when words like bigotry are used too frequently. If we really want to address bigotry and reduce its impact on society, then I think we need to get to the root cause of it. A lot of people seem like they just want to deal with what they perceive as hatred or the negative associations of others, but that's not the root of it, that's just a symptom of it. I think a better definition of bigotry is the insistence of treating an individual according to some category or generalization. So what that means is whenever you ignore the individual and treat them according to some category that you can group them in based on skin color or religion or gender or something like that, then you are guilty of bigotry. And I think this is at the root of what gives people the excuse to let it escalate into hatred. It's much easier to hate a categorical projection than it is a person. And when we think in those terms, the individual gets lost, thereby exaggerating the risk of injustice. So for example, if you hear a stat that says people of a certain ethnicity are more likely to get into car accidents, and then you treat every individual of that ethnicity as if they're a bad driver, then you're guilty of bigotry. The key thing to remember is that every individual should be treated as an individual and not as a category based on some shared trait. So does that mean we can't criticize or even condemn the symptoms of a community? No, we can and sometimes should, and we should be able to do it without fear of the phobia suffix being thrown at those who do make such criticisms. But it does mean that we can't treat every individual of a community according to those criticisms. Not every individual of a community is guilty of the symptoms of that community. So if you think that my definition and the distinctions I've made between individuals and categories is accurate, I want to take some time to describe what I think the implications of that definition are. I've had people try to suppress my freedom of speech by using phrases like white privilege and mansplaining. The implication here is that my life has been easy, so I don't have enough perspective to have an opinion worth listening to. This is an instance in which a criticism against a community, specifically white people, is being used against me as an individual, even though that might be entirely inaccurate. Identity-based politics that suffers from a pattern of treating individuals according to their group traits is also really problematic under this definition. An example of this is when everyone from a minority is told by political parties and leaders that because their community has suffered injustices, that they themselves are a victim. Even if a particular member of that group has never suffered the same fate as other members of their community. If you relentlessly reinforce to someone that they are a victim, even if they're not, then they might start to believe that they are. 
And if they believe that they're a victim, then they might as well be one. That brand of social justice is one that actually amplifies the effects of bigotry and injustice by extending it to individuals who might have otherwise escaped it. Now, this list of examples could go on, but I think you get the idea. So let's stop treating every form of criticism as hatred and bigotry. There are countless examples of criticism and correction that are being offered in love. Parents do it all the time. And let's stop using categorical thinking to dehumanize and oppress individuals. Thank you so much for watching. We're gonna try and make one of these videos a few times a month and hopefully we can get it up to about once a week. And they're gonna be about topics that are interesting to me and hopefully interesting to you too. And so if they are, please subscribe and come find me on Twitter and elsewhere and stay tuned.